pixels, they blink, they flash, they change to signal information to us that we received a missed call or a discount, a weather update or a software update. This multifunctional pixel world is largely visual. And it calls upon our attention from out here to in there because it has something to say. While no doubt useful and amazing, we're overlooking an important world that's also speaking to us, and that's the organic world of molecules, of matter, of living systems. Can we enable the organic world to speak a bit louder to us? Perhaps an apple can tell me that it's been contaminated during transport. For the last several years at the MIT Media Lab, I've been trying to figure out how can we transform pixels into droplets, activating through the presence of compounds as opposed to ones and zeros. I've developed these smart materials I call organic primitives. A single droplet, they come to life, changing color, odor, and form in response to its chemical environment. When multiple of these primitives are combined, we can make a single material that can change odor, switch from on to off, change across the spectrum of colors, and change across the different degrees of form deformation with just a single material. In developing organic primitives, this has brought me on a journey of hacking food. Often what we know as food are also organisms with a collection of biomaterials that can respond to a number of stimuli. For example, anthocyanin, it's a molecule produced by plants from tulip flowers to red cabbage. It can change across an array of colors, and its function is to attract insects and animals to pollinate and disperse the seeds. Vanillin, it's that primary molecule contributing to the odor and taste of vanilla bean extract. It's often used for flavoring in food, for anything from making bread to ice cream. And chitosin, it's a macromolecule produced by crabs and shrimp shells. It's that leftover material you don't eat on your plate. All of these molecules are common in food, but we can also extract them, recombine them, and engineer them to develop new materials that can change properties. In using these molecules, and amongst others, my goal was to develop organic primitives into rudimentary input-output building blocks that can be used as a medium for design. A medium that acts as a translator, an interface between the molecular codes that we can't understand and our human perceptions. This will allow us to interact and understand what the natural world is telling us through droplets, similar to what pixels are telling us through computers. So just as pixels are the visual representations for the information output of computers, Droplets can be information outputs of molecules. So we use these culturally recognizable symbols to usually represent information to us with pixels. With organic primitives, you can use natural signals like odor, texture, movement as the vocabulary design with molecules. This allows us to create objects and apples that literally transform into a display or a sensor. And now the apple can tell me, uh-oh, I am the bad apple or enable an umbrella to bleed in the presence of acid rain, saying the sky is hurting, or create clothing for textiles that literally refreshes to new designs when you apply a new perfume. Utensils that refuses to pick up your food because you've just eaten too much. <laughs> <laughs> we understand pain through blood, when we see blood. We feel a sense of danger when we see spotted patterns and trypophobia. We understand forms through their affordances. Also, forks can tell us that you can poke because of its shape. But when it changes form, it tells you that you can't use it anymore in that same way. So this vocabulary leverages the way that we initially interact and innately interact with natural signals and transform the way that we interact with these systems. It allows designers to use droplets to design new three-dimensional forms that can animate before your eyes. Create passive time-telling devices. And even titrate across a series of colors and odors with just two inputs. As we move from pixels to droplets, this can allow us to turn these overlooked subtle interactions that we have with food, bodies, and the environment to instead of hearing them as whispers, we hear them as hollers and allows us to transform these interactions.